and maybe verse 18. Let's begin in verse 18. And all my servants and all my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. But that great and notable day of the Lord but that great and before that great and noble day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is prophetic in the sense that that day is coming, has come, and still is. That where men who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, we talk about we got the ah millennials, the post millennials, we got we got all kind of labels and stuff that we put on people. But the truth of the matter is every man, woman, boy, or girl needs to be saved. And they need to know that being saved is not coming to a church and then going out and living in a worldly way. Y'all know what a worldly way is? I mean, uh, you know, here I am, and you know, we got these locators on our phone. Here's Bill and Fred at the bar and grill eating at the beach. Ladies and gentlemen, what kind of advertisement did that give for Jesus for your Christian family to be at Joe's Bar and Grill eating supper? I want somebody to rise up out of your seat and justify why we can be in places like that with a name such as that and call ourselves the sons and daughters of God. I want somebody to explain to me how you can walk around and be your own self when you claim that you know God and He's your Savior. Because you, I'm telling you, the Bible says you've been bought with a price. High-minded, high-headed rascals you are. And, and that's, the whole, that's the whole criticism and the whole problem. The church is not supposed to be in the bars, but we're supposed to win the bars to bring them to church. Oh, excuse me. That was a good place for an amen. Amen? See, I... We, 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 can, we do that stuff regularly. I mean, we, we do that stuff regularly. We don't even say nothing about people living together no more. We don't, even, we don't say nothing about young girls getting pregnant out of wedlock. I mean, we, you know what we do? We give them parties at the church. I knew you weren't going to like me this morning. But I'm just showing you how easy it is and how far. We say, well, what you going to do? Put, uh, hey, I'm telling you what, who's going to learn the lesson? If the church don't have something to say about the LBGTQ or whatever else it is, if we don't have something to say about abortion, if we don't have something to say about the way men and women are living, who's got something to say about it? Hey, if we're not preaching a gospel that, that, that God does not want us meandering and wandering and hanging out on the street corners of, of sin, who's going to say something about it? Hey, we don't need just to teach our children where Scripture is, Sister Donna. We need to teach them what's in the Scripture when we get there. Amen. That's, that's the whole deal. Awesome to learn Scripture. But what does the Scripture say when we find out where it is? What does it mean to us? And, and that, that's the truth of it. Uh, you know, you, you take an average 16-year-old person. You take this 16-year-old person, you give them everything they want. What do you expect them to do? You give them an automobile, you give them freedom. What do you expect them to do? I'll tell you exactly what they're going to do. They're going to do what a 16-year-old kid does. They're going Because they don't have the knowledge or the understanding of life to do what's right. And somebody's got to be there and say, you are not there yet. You're not old enough to be there yet. And somebody still needs to guide you until you get your senses straight. Amen. And that's just the truth of life. Is that not just the truth? As a parent, you don't say, here, just go ahead. You know, use your own judgment. Do your own thing. You, there's got to be some kind of supervision. Somebody got authority over that young man. Because you're going to do it. I'm telling you right now. And then from 17, 18 years old, uh, you know, it's just going to keep on. Uh, you know, children today are smarter than their parents. Parents say, I don't know what to do with them. And, and that's, they're being truthful. We don't know what to do. So what are we going to do? The scripture said the day will come when they, 
those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That day wasn't that day. Y'all listening? That day was not here when Jesus Christ came on this earth. Now, I'm going to tell you, you go back through the Old Testament and show me one person that had a salvation experience that God didn't call and give to them himself. You show me one person who said, well, I think I'll be saved today. No, sir, that, that's not the way it was. God poured his spirit out on whom he would in the Old Testament. And then Jesus Christ came, broke down the curtain, tore down the curtain of grace, and let grace flow on everybody. And so today, we have in Jesus Christ a plan that where we can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. But what I don't want you to get mixed up is salvation and and a form of salvation. What I don't want you to get mixed up is that I can get saved and, and just live the way I still was living before and do what I was still doing because that's the deception that's in our day. That's the deception that has come upon men. And guys, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know how we're going to handle that. We're probably going to offend more than we help. But look here. The truth of the truth is the truth is the truth. Well, you know it yourself. I, I can get on national television. I can go and hold meetings across our country and lie, and nobody says anything about my lying. Everybody says, oh, that don't matter. In the scheme of things, being a liar doesn't mean anything. But I'll tell you, read Revelation, and it says, no liar shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not one liar is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So it does matter. It matters not just now, but it's mattered the whole time, and it don't matter in the end. That's just the way it is. But that's the way we look at it. Uh, you know, we, there's more uh, press time to somebody who is fighting abortion or, or to have abortion. There, there's more press time given to this LGBT stuff. What bathroom to pee in for God's sake? Hey, what's going on when we have to sit around and have discussions about that kind of stuff? I'm not, I'm not, whatever you, I'm not LGBT friendly. <laughs> we, I'll just tell you, and the church shouldn't be. That's why we wrote it in our constitution. We wouldn't tolerate it. And so I want to ask you something, though, just while we're passing through that minefield. Why, why do we allow uh, sex outside of marriage? Why do we allow drinking and, and profanity and profane living if we're not going to allow everything? Somebody please stand up and tell me that this morning. Why do we come out so strongly against one uh, thing and, and sit idly while other things are happening all around us? That's right. Come on. That's, I, why are we passing through that minefield? Why don't we step on that thing and see if it blows up? That's right. I'm going to tell you something. We, we've lost the control. But the day will come when men call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Sure enough, in Romans chapter 10, verses 8, 9, and 10, it tells us God's plan in verse 13. It says the same thing. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They said that was coming. There it is. Paul has talked about it and given it to us in Romans. Over and again, uh, we are called to God to be saved uh, by His Spirit, by His power, by the blood of Jesus Christ. We've been washed and we've been forgiven. And folks, I'll tell you right now, let's begin. If, if we make a covenant for anything, let's make a covenant to begin to walk in the grace that we have received from God. Let's make a covenant that we'll be real and genuine. Hey, we need an auto fax on our life. We need a Christian fact on our life. We need to, hey, when somebody says, hey, give them the facts of why you know you're a Christian. Hey, don't let them buy into some uh, something that ain't worth a dime. I'm going to tell you something at the end of it all. All this mess that's been, uh, you know, hoop, hoop, hula, and fun's going to turn into sadness when, when hell opens up and begins to swallow up. Those people that followed up somebody's plan instead of finding, uh, following God's plan the way we ought to live. Y'all know I'm telling you the truth. You know I am. But the more we talk about it, it seems like the deeper we get away from it. The more we talk about how we ought to live, more leave it, more go home and live like it. What are we going to do with it? Aren't you, are y'all not alarmed? The Bible said the watchman got up on the wall and sounded the alarm. Don't you hear the watchman crying? Don't you hear the watchman sounding the alarm? Something's wrong. Don't you hear it? I know God wouldn't give it if there wasn't a cause for it to be given. I know God wouldn't send, send these alarms to us. There's something to be alarmed about. And it's, it's the alarm is of how we're living. 
Salvation is not to be like the pearls before the swine, that we live like that. It's like casting pearls before the swine. Did you know what a set of uh, pearls cost? Do you realize how, how, how much uh, effort has gone into finding a pair of natural pearls? They're worth hundreds of dollars, even thousands of dollars. And then to take those pearls and throw them down in a hog pen where the pig can walk on, and that's exactly what's going on in our church. We are putting the pearls before the swine, and I want you to know they're being walked into the mud. We're saying it's all right to wallow. It's all right to live in hellishness. It's all right to talk and, and to live and watch and do what we're doing. It's all right and preacher just shut up because I'm going to live it and if you don't like it take a pill and go to sleep. That's what we're saying. That's what we're saying. Amen. Church is the only place in society where, we, where that happens. I want you to get up tomorrow and try it at your job site. Where you've been working, just try living there like you conduct yourself as a child of God in support of wherever you work. Just lay out when you want to lay out and see how long you have a job. Just half do the job where you work and see how long you stay there. That's what I'm telling you guys. But we don't think about it in that that sense of the word, do we? We don't, we don't think about it at all. We don't think about it. it, it how about your, your relationships in your homes? How much attention you give to your relationship in the home? I mean, really, how much? Does any old thing go with you, Donna, as far as it relates to Buck? Can he just throw you down, walk all over you, treat you like you ain't nothing? You don't answer that out loud. But y'all know what I'm saying, right? You know exactly what I'm saying. You know that wouldn't work for one minute. You could hear the bomb when it went off all the way over here from Vinegar Road. Y'all know it wouldn't work. Next thing you know, they, I'd be hearing the preacher, we got some counseling we need to do. I caught Buck asleep and killed him. But you know what, you know what we're talking about. Y'all understand the simplicity is life, the complexity is life. You'll understand where we're trying to go here. You know, I don't have time in our service this morning, but I'll, I can surely highlight it. I don't have time to go back and back up every event that Jesus Christ participated in until he got to the cross and, and the great suffering, agony, and pain and the great love wherewith he's loved us and that he laid down his life for us. I mean, how many times can we talk that over and over? It is not about you and I satisfying lust and hungers of our flesh or of our mind. It's about us following Jesus Christ. It's about us walking with him. And I'm going to tell you that trip to the cross is a long walk. And I'm going to tell you the burden of the cross is heavy and that we take up to be his disciples and walk with him and follow him. So when you enter in, you, it ain't no big deal because if you live godly, you will suffer persecution. And when I look around at you boys and girls, you ladies and gentlemen, I don't see a whole lot of suffering in our congregation. I don't see a whole lot of whining because of suffering that's come on you because you walk with Jesus. And that tells me you're not following him because if we live godly, we will suffer persecution. It will come. And if it don't, I'll throw that thing away and I won't ever preach it again. Because it's all a lie. If I can live like some of you are living and be in God's will, I'll throw my Bible away and quit. Because you're living wrong and it ain't in my Bible. And I didn't do that to get your attention. I mean every word of it. I'll throw it out my door and forbid it be taught in my house. If you can live the way some of you are living and be a child of God. Period. Children of God don't live the way some people in this building are living. Children of God don't act the way some are acting in this building. And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart because you sat here. I asked Victor the other night not to embarrass him, but I asked him. Son, what have you learned sitting here? He's been sitting here. What have you learned? What have you heard from this preacher? What have I preached all these years? And if you learn nothing after all these years, what good has it done you? Really, just tell the truth about it. The Bible said, listen, the Bible said, it'd be better if you'd have never heard what was in this book than to have heard what was in this book and walk away from it. It'd been better if you'd have never heard the name of Jesus than to have heard him and then walked on his name and, and said you were here. It'd have been better for you in the end if you'd have never pretended. 
It'd be better if you go home and tear up your baptism certificate, your church member certificate, because I'm telling you something. It'll be like a fire burning you if you have lived your life in error. Uh -huh. Amen? Going back and reviewing salvation, you review salvation, you review the walk of Christ, you review the suffering of Christ, you review, the, you review the pain of God as he watched his only beloved son hang there on that cross without sin and take our sin and die and become a sacrifice, a petition, a petition, whatever you want to call it. Substitution, a propitiation. Whatever he's become for us. He, he just didn't walk into it. It was a suffering way he took. He was a suffering servant. And we walk with him. We walk into suffering servant mood. He, in fact, Peter said, you'll not wash my feet. He said, if I don't, you won't never enter into my, my heaven, my, my presence. Peter said, wash me all over. You see, as, as quick to speak as Peter was, as as his mind went everywhere, he acknowledged when Jesus said to him, except I wash your feet, you won't be in fellowship with me. Peter said, wash me all over, Lord. You see, he learned. When Jesus spoke, he learned. When the Lord speaks, he means it. When the Lord speaks, he means it. This ain't a playbook, folks, that we play in by. This ain't a game. This is, this is a death and resurrection. Old men die, new men live. We live under the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We live by the power and the anointing of the Spirit. You saw Joe. Joe said they'll pour out the Spirit and many a dream dreams and prophesy. And that's what happened. How many dreams are you dreaming and prophesying about the walk of the Lord God? Come on, hey, why don't we just have a discussion about this? Why don't we just uh, come and reason together like the prophet said? Why don't we just come on and, and just let God uh, uh, take our lives and point out to us and show us? Make our life a screen upon which people can look and see the inaccuracy and the error in our walk and, and help us to come to repentance before we perish and die and go to a devil's hell. Just telling you. That's straight up preaching right there, right out of the book. Right out of this precious book. But you see, a man that leaves this earth, which more are leaving without it than are leaving with it, without Christ, is damned to hell. He's gone. A lost man dies, he's gone. He's, he's set aside and he'll be judged as a lost man and in hell he'll lift up his eyes. It's going to happen. But all we got to do is call on the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. Call on the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. Preacher, you just don't know how I've had to live and what I've had to live through. Is that going to get you to heaven? Let me see if I can find that in the Bible. Uh, preacher, I grew up in a Catholic church and I don't think like you do. Is that going to get you to heaven because you're a Catholic? <laughs> i tell you what, you take your little Catholic stamp and go up there and say, Lord, I was a Catholic. See what he says to you. I was a Baptist, Lord. I, here's my membership over to, at the New Post, New Horizon Baptist Church. There's Preacher Tom's signature. It ain't going to do you a dime of good. You hear me? If that Christ ain't living in your heart. In fact, when I tell you when Christ sees you, if you remember Matthew 25, uh, Christ sees you, he's not going to see you. He's going to see what he's done in you. That's what the scripture says. When, Lord, did we do that kind of thing? He said, if you do it to the least of these, my children, you do it also unto me. That's what the Lord said. Now, let me tell you something. He's not keeping the same set of records you're keeping. He's not looking at the same sort of things you're looking at. You, you, you probably think you're all right people. You probably think that, hey, how can I get any better? Look, how can it get any better than what it is? Good job, good family, good this, good that, new car, new truck, new this, new that, new boop, boop. Got some in the bank and some on credit. Got it all lined up, got it all fixed up. I'm on my way. Sing your song till Jesus comes and you go to hell alone. 
That's exactly what's happening, folks. That's exactly what's happening. Please be not deceived by the Satan. Please don't let the subtlety of the devil ruin your life, destroy your children, destroy your home, and, and cause your health to go to nothing, cause everything about you to be sour and, and bitter. Don't let the devil do it to you. Don't let him hold you down anymore. I'm telling you, get up from there and fight back. Amen? Amen? That's what we got to do. There ain't no day for me to retire and quit fighting. I don't know how. I got a lot of friends that I love and thought they've retired and quit fighting. They thought they come to the magic age when they draw their, their this or that, their retirement pay, and it's time to quit. How do you how how can I quit? How can we? The Bible says that those who endure to the end shall be saved. I want to be like that little, little decky girl. I want to look around when I get there and there weren't nobody around her. She'd done so good, she'd outswum everybody in the building. That's what we ought to do. We don't need to drag back and wait till they catch up. We need to be ahead of the curve. We need to be ahead pushing and pressing and training and building ourselves up that when the event happens, we'll be ahead of all that the devil set and try to keep us back. Hey, let me tell you something. That's, that's exactly what it is. We don't need to drag feet. Step out. Get ahead and, and keep on pressing. That's what the Bible says. Keep your eyes on the prize. Press toward the high calling in Jesus Christ. You see, that that's, this salvation thing, I mean, the writer here, Dr. Luke says, he, he says, look here, the day's coming when you can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. The day, I can say to you this morning, that day is past. It now is. You can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. You can call on the name of the Lord and be full of the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is not disorderly and out of order. God is orderly and does what He does in order. The Spirit of God is well distinguishable from the Spirit of man and the Spirit of the world. The Spirit of God is not of this earth, earthly, and it's but of heaven, spiritual, and, and it's very easily distinguished when we see Him at work in this world today. Everybody's been in my office. We talked about this. The first thing I've said to y'all and y'all, Y'all give a testimony is from my heart, from our church land and their heart, is that thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. You're important to us. Thank you. Well, some of you have not bothered to sign up. But I'm going to tell you this morning now, this is not a threat. If I ain't got a sheet on you, you will not serve in this church next year. I ask you if God was leading you to do something, please sign up and let's have a little talk. But that's just the bottom line. That's not a threat. That's just a statement of fact. And that don't mean that, that we decided that. That means you did because God ain't leading you to do nothing. And so you won't be doing anything. Amen? We've made this clear for a month. Made it clear for a month. One day the Lord's coming. He said, I'm coming. You didn't believe that either. You ain't preparing for that either. But he's coming one day whether you prepared for it or not, or I. And he, he's telling us. And so that's all we ask you to do. Guys, if you ain't got 15 minutes for the Lord in your church, there's something wrong. Amen. Millie drove all the way from down yonder, way down yonder, the other side of Lord's, on Tuesday night and came all the way back up here on Wednesday night to attend church for a 15-minute appointment right there in my office. It's what you want to do. You've got a cooperative spirit. You've got a hateful, hurtful spirit. You don't want to cooperate with nobody. You're an independent wanting to be by yourself. I mean, I, that's just the honest God's truth. Y'all can say amen or you not say amen. But that's just the truth. We just ask you, please, sign up here so we can get it on. That in and of itself ought to be a warning to you if you don't want to do that. That ought to be a warning to you something's out of a kelter with your relationship with God because you don't want no relationship with man. Right. That ought to be a warning to you. But hey, you can take it any way you want to. That's up to you. That's your business. But just trying to show you something. 
If I opened the door there and if we had time, I would, just to prove my point. I don't know how many people we got buried back here. There they ain't a whole bunch of them. But there's, there's probably a dozen. Let's say a dozen. But if I opened this door right here this morning, walked back there with my, with my announced thing on, and I said, hey, and I called them names, I kicked their tombstones over, I spit on their grave, they wouldn't have one of them say a word. And my Bible says, Buck, that if a man's saved, you can kick him, spit on him, cuss him, and he won't say a word. Because we are dead. You know what the Bible, what if I walked up here and slapped his jaws? He'd jump up and run out there to get that shotgun he's got in his truck. But the Bible says, turn to him the other cheek. Ain't that what it says? Just like them dead people out there that are physically dead, we're supposed to be dead too. Amen. We're supposed to be physically dead. Are you physically dead in Christ? You dead to what you want to do? Don't answer that. I'm just you just sitting here. You and the, you can answer it, but you and the Lord take care of it. See, that's what this is all about. This precious little book, and I weren't being disrespectful to that when I threw it over there, because what we do is we really throw it over there when we're not doing what it says. Might as well not have it, right? Psalmist said, I'll hide it in my heart that I don't, mm, the Lord's giving a witness right now, said, I'll hide it in my heart that I don't sin against him. said, I'll hide it in my heart. And you know why he said that? Because he didn't want to sin against God. We're going to have an invitation here in a minute. Y'all know what I, you know, we, we talked this big stuff, but, you know, you sit here in Sunday school and a few of you come. Some don't come because the temperature in your room ain't what you think it ought to be. That really, boy, I heard that one and I almost said, what? Teacher, you might not like her or him. And you know, Sunday's just your sleep time. Well, I hope you leave your, lose your job next week so you'll have plenty of time to sleep. In fact, I'm going to pray for them that, that can't get here because of sleep. That I pray God will help you lose your job. So you can get caught up on your rest. Y'all think I'm joking, don't you? I'm not joking when I order. I think things like that need to happen. I pray your air conditioner breaks down. You just get it fixed back, right? So that you'll know what hot is. I've worked out there in that sun all week. Dug them ditches right down inside that building right there. 73 year old man, what have you done? other than set in the building with air conditioning and you can't sit in Sunday school because it's too uncomfortable for you. Bless your little hearts. We've come to a sickening time. I'm going to tell you right, it's Christians are sickening. I know what people mean when they talk about how they act at church. I know exactly because, hey, we, it's beginning to happen here. We're sickening. Like little babies, little boys and girls, if we don't get a sucker, we're not coming back to your class. But our world, Buck, is in chaos. Our, we whine about what's going on in the economy and we can't even support the economy of our churches. Our families, our lives are, uh, are so distorted. And we can't, 
We can't do what the Lord says. I don't know what the Lord's going to do. I do know by virtue of what he says in the Bible, but I, I don't know how and when he's going to do it. And that just ter terrorizes me because I'm sitting over here waiting for the hammer to drop and don't know what to say when it does drop because there's been no fellowship and there's been no working together when you were here and when you're in distress in a hospital somewhere, how am I going to talk to God on your behalf? Or when you're dead, Father's still on a roadside somewhere and Nicole is picking you up because you were on the phone or whatever you were doing and you're dead now. How am I going to console your family? Because there's no relationship. See, that's, that bothers me. You Ask Judy. I talked to her, Judy. I, hey, we, something's got to happen here. It's killing me. It's eating, the, it's eating the life out of me. That's why I have her cover up them gray hairs. It's eating the life out of you. Why would a person that's a Christian not have a cooperative spirit? Why would a person that's a Christian not want to be a part of what Christian people do? Fred, can you tell me? What in the world? What's wrong, Millie? What's happening? Do y'all in the balcony have any answers? If you do, roll it up on a piece of paper and throw it over here and I'll catch it and see if it... Hey, we got to find answers somewhere, young'uns. We got to find them. What, what are we going to do? It says, mothers weeping for their children. Ever who's playing, get us a song. Let's have an invitation. Go home and think about what the Lord's done dump here this morning. And the Lord willing, come back tonight if you will. Bring somebody with you. My God, they laying out by the dozens. Find somebody to be, be your guest on your trip back. Tell them the story that they can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. But why are you telling them that? Just tell them the story of what you ought to do before you. Tell them how you ought really to live. Don't be insulted when somebody tells you the truth. Take it for the truth it is. You see, coach got fired because he prayed with his football players. Now he's suing the, he's suing the county. He's going to lose. He's not wanting any money. He just wants reinstatement. He's going to lose. Christians don't have no right in this world we live in. Y'all know that, right? What he should have done said I was having a little Muslim meeting. They said, oh, praise the Lord. Man, we're glad y'all decided to meet on our football field. We'll put you something to wash your feet in before the game. That's the truth. Y'all think I'm that's exaggerated? That's the truth. The taxi cab drivers in New York City, they built a place at the airport, the Muslims, so they can wash their feet on that unholy ground. So don't you tell me I'm mocking. I'm telling you exactly what happens. If you put Christ on it, though, they'll burn the building down. They won't let it go on. And that's what we've done. God help us. What's our song? To only trust him. Y'all come. Come let the Lord have his way with you. If he's leading you, you come. I don't know what else to tell you. I preached everything he gave me. And I'm through. If you lost, come on, I'll help you. I'll try to show you what the scripture says. Let him have his way. Please don't ignore it. Please don't let it pass by you today. 
Please listen. Please listen. You in the balcony, listen. Please listen today. Please come down. Please come up. Whatever it is we need to do, please let the Lord have His way. Trust in Him today. Trusting in His Word. Only trust Him. Let Him have His way with you. Just come on. Lord, thank you so much this morning for Jesus. My God. Lord, what a time, what a message. Lord, that we have to preach. But Lord, we're living in that day.